Well, we're in Poland. Yes. The first thing we've had to do is get some Polish money because yes. Poland does not take the euro. So here we go. So I've been to get some Polish zloty. Okay, so I think it's one euro. No, one pound is five zloty. I think. Mm. So who knows? So we called it a service station, the first one yeah, in. First one to get, which is get a, some got cash. a cash machine. Yeah. Got some zloty. And um, I know this, it does say they prefer smaller notes. So I have been to get, it did give me a hundred note. So I have been into the service station and bought a bottle of water to get some change. Yeah. So yeah, it's a bit retro this. <laughs> this is the first toll booth that we've come to in Poland. So we're following the wagons through and we'll see how we get on. Okay. Yeah, got it. Yeah. You work out how much you want. No. So that was quite straightforward, a little bit like the um, paid tolls in France, if you've ever used those. You just press the button and you take a ticket. So I would imagine when we get to the end of the toll road, it'll be a case of putting the ticket back in and then paying the relevant fee by credit card. Good morning. Good morning from Hotel Camping Malta, just outside Poznan in Western Poland. Behind me is Poznan. It's the fifth largest city in Poland and the second most prosperous behind Warsaw. It all looks very new, it looks very vibrant. Today, we're gonna to explore the old town which has been there since the 10th century. As it stands at the minute, Poznan is famous for its safety, its healthcare, its education, and economically now relies on industry, trade, commerce, and its very large university system. Come with us as we go and explore. Behind me is Poznan Cathedral. It's the oldest cathedral in Poland. The Arch Cathedral of St. Peter and St. Paul dates back to the 10th century, when the first church was built on this site. The location of the cathedral has been the site of multiple reconstructions over the centuries. It's also been the site of several royal coronations, including the first Polish king, Bolslaw the Brave, in 1025. Other coronations followed. Many notable figures, including Polish kings and bishops, are interned inside its walls, and it's a very important religious location for the Polish Catholic Church. This is the old town in Poznan, and it's fair to say the, bu the buildings are absolutely stunning. Unfortunately, as you can see, there's a vast amount of work going on. This square would rival many that we've seen throughout Europe, I have to say. It's just such a shame that we, when we're here today, there's so much building work going on. But you can imagine there's going to be a real cafe culture, so many places to eat and drink, and it's just, the buildings are just absolutely beautiful. Maybe this is a reason to come back again, because up to now, Poznan's definitely a place that you'd return to, just to check it all out. We made our way to the Citadel Park, located on a site of a former Prussian fortress. It's about a 15 minute walk outside of Poznan town centre. It covers an area of 100 hectares and it's a beautiful place to walk. 
The significance of the military site ended after the Second World War, but it's still got quite an important part to play in telling the history of Poznan. On this site, there are two military museums. One that references the battle with the Nazis in the Second World War, and another reflects the Soviet-era military uh, commitment. There is also a special um, memorial here to the victims of the 1956 ups uprising, which was brutally suppressed by the communist government. This is a small um, museum area uh, detailing the efforts by the Poznan army in defence of the nation against the Nazis. They fought sternly and the losses were high. And Polish people are very resilient people, so it must have taken something to have overcome them. One thing for certain, you get a sense when you're here today in Poland that uh, they wouldn't be overcome again so easily. Um, there is a real sort of spirit of growth in this place and a sense of nationhood and not in a nationalist, nationalistic chest banging sense, but every Polish person you feel is proud of being Polish and proud of where they're from and they seem to be all together. It's quite, uh, it's quite a warming atmosphere really being here. We're loving Poland and uh, we're loving the Polish people. And uh, one thing we're finding through our travels is wherever you go, um, it's always better to meet a Polish person in Poland or a German people in German or a Spanish person in Spain. You know, don't, don't uh, judge Brits by Brits abroad, judge them by their own nation and that's the same principle for everyone and uh, it really does make a difference in the way you view the world when you do that. These are images of the Polish patriots that uh, stood on in defence of the nation. And see the remnants of artefacts found subsequently later on by using the battlefield maps like this one. It's quite clear from the records that these seven to eight thousand Germans were killed or wounded in the battle around here. They did not have it easy. These graves are all wartime graves. And that's got a Polish symbol on it, but these are Stars of David on that side. And there are rows of them here. Oh yeah, that's like a, it's like a um, Commonwealth War Cemetery. You can you see with the layout of the stones down there? Yeah. Just through the trees. So these are from the First World War and the Second World War. And these look like, um, I guess, Commonwealth War graves that you see probably all over the UK and all over France and around there, so. This is maintained by the people of Poznan on behalf of the uh, Commonwealth Graves Commission. And the amount of unknown soldiers and unknown airmen in here is quite staggering. Thank you, Poland. Matters. We appreciate it. This is the other side of the military museum. Polish tanks. Poppy and I are waiting patiently for Martin to finish in the, as you can see behind me, he's gone into a tank museum. Um, and I just thought I'd give you a few early impressions of Poland. Now, we've never been to Poland before, so this is a complete first for us. The first thing is, it's late April and the weather's fantastic. It's absolutely beautiful, 20 plus degrees today. Um, the Polish people are very friendly, um, very accommodating. They'll try to help you as best they can with anything that you need. We've had excellent service in restaurants, um, supermarkets, etc. The site that we're staying on is very good. They speak great English, um, and I have to say, Poland's been, I don't know whether to say it's a surprise, but it's been a complete delight. I'm thoroughly enjoying this early exploration into Poland, and there's still quite a bit to go yet. Everything seems to be really good value. We had a meal in a pub tonight, uh, tonight, this afternoon, in the main square in Poznan, and it cost us something like 130 zloty which worked out about, uh, the main course has worked out about eight pounds each, which I think is a really good value. Um, and it's, yeah, it's a really nice place. What else can I tell you about Poznan? It's vibrant, 
it's clean, you feel very safe walking around. It's got a really good um, public transport infrastructure. You can get trams almost everywhere over the city. So this is where I get to spend the next 15, 20 minutes while Martin goes and looks round a tank and aircraft museum. Now don't get me wrong, I do like sort of aircraft, military aircraft, etc. But I prefer the ones that are still flying and not relics or ones that have been here since the Cold War. So Martin's just gone to have a look round. Entrance fee is 12 zloty, which is about £2.50. So it's um, probably going to be quite good value. This museum is the largest of its kind in Poland and has a collection of over 60 armoured fighting vehicles. There is an indoor exhibition and an outdoor exhibition. The exhibition is organised chronologically and includes tanks, armoured cars and aircraft. The highlights for me were the Soviet era T-34 tanks and a MiG-15 fighter. It's been quite interesting to look round here. This was mainly of course from an era when Poland was part of the Soviet bloc prior to independence and prior to joining NATO. This vibrant city in Western Poland has truly captivated us. It offers a rich history, culture and modernity, all superbly blended to make visiting a delight. The old town, despite the ongoing work, is picturesque with coloured facades and we felt like we could keep walking around the streets for hours. Great local food and drink, and we understand that this safe city offers a vibrant nightlife, if that's what you're into. So full of hope for our newfound Delight, which is Poland, we're setting off further into country. Join us in the next one to find out where Martin out. Helen out.